G'day folks, I'm Mitchell Dale. This is Rugby League Week TV's Year in Review, Part 2, The Bad Moments of 2014. So I've got Martin Lenahan and Eric Groth here to discuss it. Eric, let's kick it off with you. What didn't you like about 2014? What didn't I like? I didn't like that Isaac Luke missed out on the grand final. I think that was just too harsh. I don't think the tackle was that bad. Maybe a penalty, definitely a penalty, to miss the grand final. I wish there was some way they could maybe make him miss next year and not a game like the grand final. Because I don't think there was intent for him to drive someone's head into the ground. I think with our game, big body collision at fast paces, lifting and driving, things are going to happen. Well, do you look at the system? So you, you get 100 points and you miss a game. Perhaps for, for maybe State of Origins and a grand final, you have to accrue 200 points to miss a game like Because they are the pinnacle of the year. I definitely felt sorry for Isaac. Yeah. It's we, not a bad we, idea. We can't have a grade one costing you a grand final. The carryover points have got to be looked at. Grade one is not bad enough. People say, oh, guys will just go open slather in a pre prelim final because they'll know... That's rubbish. No, won't. Nobody goes out there now, open slather. We don't have a million guys in the bin. We don't have guys getting their head taken off. Forget about some, all that. And if someone does, then they're going to get scrapped out anyway. But for a, a grade one tackle like that to miss a grand final was pretty harsh. Like, even send him off. Like, uh, send him off. Like, let him play the week after, whatever you do. Yeah. As, as for the NRL trying to say he couldn't get up there and celebrate with the team, that was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And I'm pleased that they went back on that pretty quickly and allowed him to yeah. celebrate. He was as much a part of that premiership as, that right. uh, that, as the other. That's off to him for, for reneging on that. That's, um, yeah, that's, that would have been awful. It would have been another bad moment of 2014 if they didn't fix it. What about you, Leno? What was your... Uh... Oh, mate, the Tigers for me, Mitch, just the whole saga. I felt very sorry for Mick Potter. Deserved another year. We put a new board in place. I'm not quite sure where they got the intelligence, the knowledge there to say Mick Potter should be sacked. Who, who told them that? They, they didn't really know that much about the club. I think he deserved another shot. The team was flying early on and then a lot of injuries kicked in and you could see the confidence in that young team go down. No, no bagging Jason Taylor, I reckon he'll be okay. But And, and part of that as well with Robbie Farrer and Gordon Tallis, very ugly. Gordon Tallis, I'm sorry, sold Robbie Farrer up the creek. There was no need to be revealing what Robbie Farrer had said to him a year ago about Michael Potter. I thought that was very poor. The two of them went on the footy show and everybody thought it was going to be, uh, you know, actually I know it was uh, Bo Ryan and Gordon Tallis on the footy show and everyone thought fireworks didn't develop. But I reckon that was pretty ordinary from Gordy. But that whole situation to me, just very average boys at the Tigers, bit of a low light for the season. Yeah, look, I think the whole situation with the Tigers, the whole, the new board, everything, it was, uh, they talk about you have to be successful off the field to be successful on it. And the Tigers just had no chance to be successful on the field. The whole situation in the front office has just been a basket case for a long time. Now, hopefully the new board's sorted out because the club's not going to be able to move forward until, until they get the front office right. 100% mate, yeah, the same thing happened with Parramatta and you know there's still some stuff going on there and unfortunately if it's not a happy work environment it eventually does breed onto the field. I, I know initially it doesn't because I've been involved in teams where it doesn't but in the end if you're going to work and you're walking in the footy office and people aren't talking and it's that kind of awkward environment it, it literally bleeds into the team. Even though it's a separate faction it's still has something to do with not enjoying and not being in a happy, healthy environment. Yeah, absolutely. Look, there are a lot of good kids there at the Tigers. Hopefully, for, for their sake, they can be allowed to develop the way they should with a, with a better working environment. Now, for me, my worst uh, moment of the year is, for starters, you deciding to wear shorts to, the, to this show and dressing like a skater boy after. You have been bagging me all year for my choice of clothing and you turn up like this. That is my second worst moment. I'd like to change mine. I just had a thought, I'd like to change mine to uh, the phone call I got early this year or late last year when I heard this. G'day Eric, it's Mitchell Dale. Would you like to be a part of Friday Ave Footy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was last year's well, worst moment. Yeah, that, that, can be, that can be 2013 for you. Look, my, seriously, my worst moment of the year is actually what we're seeing with the Four Nations and the, and the withdrawals. Um, I understand players are burnt out. I'm not having a crack at the players. It's just got to be a better balance. We've got to get to a stage where we either take international footy seriously or we just focus on our individual competitions. What can... Like, I agree 100%. What, what can they do? What can happen? I think Jonathan Thurston made some pretty good points this, this, year, this week, saying after the World Cup, and I mean, you had the Melbourne Storm guys are a prime example. They were playing footy from the start of February to the end of November. Um, there's a lot of burnout there. Um, after a World Cup campaign, perhaps the scheduling could have been looked at where they gave them this year off. I know they've given them next year off, 
probably would have made more sense to give them this year off, let everybody refresh. Um, it was a very long season. I yeah, noticed the Roosters that. mentioned it as well, didn't they? Because they had the World Cup and then the World Club Challenge. Now, they still did a remarkable job to finish on top after all of that. But look, I think, we're, yeah, we're in a situation now where we need international rugby league. We can't just let it drop away. But there's 21 Australian players not available for various reasons. Roger Tuivasa-Shek. Now, Eric, what is doing here? A winger fatigued? Come on, mate. Now, you, you were never fatigued. Yeah, I probably was a little bit, had a little bit more petrol in the tank, more so than a forward, obviously. I actually seen Lee Bennett, who's the football manager for the Roosters, before they ran out, and I said, mate, how the boys feel? And this was before they got knocked out by South. And he looked at me, and he, something on his, said on his face that it wasn't good. And I said, mate, what's up? He goes, mate, they, they are stuffed. They've had 42 weeks in a row of footy, pretty much. They've, they've had no break, because they went, obviously, for the club challenge at the end of the year. And they just said, they just need a mental break. And he goes, mate, we, if we had the week off, if we had a one, we would have got the week off, it would have been heaven for us. But the fact that we haven't had a break, he goes, mate, we're looking awful, to be honest. And you know, he wasn't bagging him, he was just being honest. So that's, that's how much footy's played. So I can see why something has to be done and why people are pulling that, out. That told on the, on the field as well. Look, thanks guys. Three bad moments of 2014. That's it from us at Rugby League Week TV. We'll be back with more soon. Yeah.